Thanks so much for tuning into the trade setup with me, Neeraj Shah. It's an interesting day of trade simply because the big event of lowering of inflation has happened, or the big marker, but the markets haven't reacted positively. Let's take stock of the global news flow first. Stock futures are flat on Thursday after the S&P 500 suffers the worst day since April. This was totally unexpected to my mind, to be really honest, but it has happened. In fact, the Nikkei has fallen 2% amid suspected yen intervention, but the rest of the Asian markets are a not as bad, must say. This is a very market-specific move that's happened. A 10-year yield, though, in the U.S. dived after the June CPI unexpectedly decreased. And in other news, uh, Joe Biden, U.S. President Joe Biden, confused Kamala Harris for Donald Trump and Zelensky for uh, Vladimir Putin at vital moments in a couple of his speeches. And I think that's been the biggest talking point across the world. Remember, after the Indian elections is over, even Indians are looking forward to, looking forward to one election which is the mother of all elections, which is the U.S. election. And I think this, is the, this has become the biggest talking point of the last 12 hours, to my mind at least, from what I have seen. So keep an eye out uh, at the U.S. political uh, end for one, for one set of clues that might, uh, that, that might come in as well. Remember, um, who does what uh, might have a bearing on eventually uh, the elect final um, president elect, if you will, and that might have a bearing on what some of the individual sectors do as well. Nevertheless, let's take stock of the U.S. markets. Uh, like I said, they didn't have the best of days, down about 2.24%. And you know, this is very surprising simply also because um, everybody, including Chris Wood, is talking about how now a September rate cut seems to be imminent. There's a Bloomberg story out there. In fact, Chris Wood of Greed and Fear says that the market is also now assuming the first rate cut in September, and Greed and Fear would agree that that is now the base case, even though there are two more months of data points likely to come in. But that's his point as well, that the market is certainly likely to see um, a rate cut in September, or at least we'll presume that there'll be a rate cut in September. So that's the big thing. Uh, Asia, across the board, uh, mixed bag. Nikkei, like I said, has a very indifferent proposition. Not all the markets are echoing Hang Seng too, by the way. So flattish move. And very likely, we'll start off on a flattish note as well. Um, that seems to be the case. Now, what's the trade setup, therefore, for the day today? Um, global markets are not quite zooming post the inflation surprise, which, like I said, is the, is the big thing. And therefore, we're not likely to zoom, per se. Uh, but... Tech could be an interesting one. Now, the reason why I say this is because uh, uh, if indeed um, Infosys delivers good commentary, HCL tech doesn't quite disappoint the way it's expected to be, and global chip makers and other AI players do well, then tech could actually have a decent move, and that is something that people would watch out for. Remember, I'll come to the TCS numbers and what brokerages have done as well, and most people are saying that there's a bit of a positive surprise in some cases out there. So that's to be kept in mind. Uh, but the sector to monitor is upstream energy and defense maybe. Those are the ones that are continue to find favor from large, uh, smart investors as well. So that's one pocket that you want to keep an eye out for, for most certainly. Okay, uh, what do we do? Let's move on to specific stocks. TCS, the Q1 numbers, revenues are up 2.2%. Uh, EBIT margins were flattish, maybe marginally lower than what was anticipated. And even on the PAT front, a bit lower than what was anticipated. Margins at 24.7 versus 25.9, lower than anticipated, like I said. PAT down 4.4% to 11891 uh, versus 12434. So that's the other number to keep an eye out for. But I think more than what the numbers have done is the brokerage note. So Jefferies has upgraded TCS to a buy. They have hiked the target price to 4615 from 4030. There's also a note from Nomura. And Nomura is saying that uh, their target price is 3860 versus 3800. They are not quite going ahead and hiking uh, the target price per se. Uh, uh, target rating per se. So they've kept it neutral, but they've just hiked the target price marginally. By the way, the... The, the, the ISG's Q2 CY24 deal flow data as well for stable managed services was steady, while XAS continued to accelerate. So that too could be a bit constructive for nifty IT in the session today. So that is something that you might want to keep a keen eye out for too uh, in the session today. I was just trying to hunt if I can get the Nomura note uh, to just give you the snapshot, one or two snapshots of what they are saying. So Nomura believes that there is a growth beat and the margins are in line for TCS. And the pipeline are near record high levels and TCV is within the comfort band 
of 7 to 9 billion and the margin execution is robust with lower attrition and subcontracting expenses so let's see maybe it's the valuation game for it stocks and they could do well tcs may not lead the way but could infosys do that remains to be seen M&M, uh, Q1 update, uh, total production up 8%, YOI at 69,000 units. Uh, total sales 11% higher at 66,800 units. And total exports up 4% at 2,597 units. So, um, okay number. They've guided to 15 to 20% growth for the broader entity. The auto sales, not quite up there. But remember, we know that Q1 has been a bit sluggish, which is why the price cuts have come in in select models as well. Let's see if things pick up closer to the festive season. Q2 might be a bit of a... A damp squib, really. Uh, Anand Rati, though, surprise and surprise positively. Surprise, why? Because they are expected to deliver 30%. They came in with 38%, both on total income as well as the net profitability, up 38% apiece for both. Uh, but the interesting thing is the AUM at 69,000 crores versus 59,000 crores in March. More importantly, this number is important because their guidance, viewers, uh, while they've come in in June 24 at 69, their guidance. Um, is around 72,000 crores for the year. They already reached 69,000 crores, so pretty strong. And record high PAT, record high revenue numbers that they've come in in the June quarter, very likely that the stock could react positively, so do watch out for this one in the session today. What else? Uh, there is Prestige. Q1 update was a bit wobbly. Pre-sales down 22% at 3,030 crores versus 3,915. But you know, average realizations were marginally higher. There could be trade-offs that could have been done because they've maintained the pre-sales expectations of 26 to 30,000 crores. If they have to clock in 30,000 crores from 3,000 in quarter one, that's another 9x of the Q1 performance to be added in the remaining nine months. Uh, they have expressed confidence. Maybe that stabilizes the stock. Let's wait and watch. GN Axel was okay. Sales were up 6.8. Pat was down. Margins were wobbly as well, 13.7 versus 15.8. Who knows? The stock was up yesterday, but could see a bit of a reaction negative today. Watch out for that. All cargo, the CFS volumes were up 20% at 55,900 55, TEUs. I think that's the number. And the volume growth has been led by increase in port volumes. Maybe all cargo uh, reacts a bit. Let's wait and watch. Uh, Azad Engineering should react positively to my mind. It's a very expensive stock, by the way. But it's received a five-year contract from Germany, Siemens Energy Global, to be executed, uh, I think, by, by 26, if I'm not wrong, uh, by March 2026, if I'm not wrong, to manufacture and supply critical rotating components. Watch out for Azad Engineering. May see a bit of a reaction positively in the session today. Z Entertainment is interesting. The board meet to consider and approve not approved really, approved raising of funds on Tuesday. Let's see if Z has a reaction to this. Long anticipated that there'll be some placement, some raising of funds. There's a formal board meet now to do that. Let's see if there's a reaction on Z as a result of that or no. Let's move on to Pitti Engineering has raised 360 crores via QIP. Allocation made to some of the top mutual funds, by the way, SBI, HSBC, Motilal Oswal. So, Let's see, it is a bit of a reaction to this one. They've also made an acquisition, so keep in mind. And lastly, from brokerage notes, one note that stood out for me, uh, UBS has counted the note on ABB. They have downgraded the stock to a neutral from a buy, but they've raised the target price to 9100 versus 8830 earlier. Current price 8457. Let's see if this one has any kind of a positive reaction. So that's the long and short on the trade setup, viewers. Thanks so much for tuning in. Have a great weekend. It's a great sporting weekend, so make the most of it.